Hello everyone, so today we're going to take a look at a Diodex custom ROM for GDI 9195 which is the LTE variant by Wireswap Heller. Now this is perfect if you do not want to go through the procedure of Diodexing your ROM. This uh, ROM also has a custom kernel which is the Wackinger kernel. Uh, kernel. It also has Knox removed, it comes rooted, you also get the Holo Launcher HD pre-installed, you can select your CSC if you want and you can also use some add-ons which I can show you in the end of this video. So basically in this video I'm going to show you how to install this and then we're going to take a quick look and see what this ROM represents and so on and finally I'm going to show you how to install these add-ons which is basically BusyBox and init.d support which unlocks you uh, many abilities to do many things. So before we begin I would highly advise you to create a backup of your apps and everything else since it is highly recommended that we wipe data just to be clean to not have any bugs and so on and uh, also, if you like, you can also create a full Android backup of your whole stock ROM if you want to later on return to it for whatever reason. And uh, download the zip file, of course, of the ROM to your SD card. The zip file is approximately 1GB long, but you can download it from the Google servers, which shouldn't take that long. Anyways, once you have set everything, you then need to power off your phone. So, power off your Galaxy S4 Mini, and once the phone shuts off, you need to hold the home button, the power and the volume up at the same time to boot to recovery mode. And you do need to have Coco Mode Recovery, uh, Team Win Recovery Project, or any other custom recovery to install this, by the way. So now, once you are in recovery mode, the first thing which I would highly recommend to do is wipe data. So that you can delete all of your previous preferences and things such as that, because it is possible that they may conflict with the new ROM. And uh, there we go, there it has been wiped. And now basically you need to head into install zip. Then choose zip from SD card storage SD card 1. In other CDOM recoveries it is named choose zip from external SD card. So choose that option and now locate the ROM zip file. So here it is, choose it and then choose yes finally to confirm. Now, just be patient, this is a large zip file so it could take a while and I'll be back once the installation is complete. So the installation sure did take a while but finally it is done. And now basically hit the back button and choose reboot system now. And you should be on your new Diorex stock ROM. So once again be patient since we have just wiped data, you should then at the beginning be on the setup wizard, choose your language, choose uh, to connect to Wi-Fi and so on. So once again I'll be back once the booting has finished. And finally after the long booting time we are finally on the setup wizard. So basically now select the language which you want to use. Then choose uh, if you want to connect to Wi-Fi and so on. I'm gonna skip this for now and I'll be back once I'm on the home screen. And finally after the long setup here we are on the home screen. So unfortunately one of the things which have been skipped to do was remove the bloatware but you can do that manually if you want. Some people may need this stuff but as you can see you still have the preset widgets here by Samsung. You get chat on, you get uh, all sorts of other Samsung services which come by default when you first buy the phone or flash a complete stock firmware. Anyways, just to quickly show you, this is the app drawer. As you can see, we have all of the Samsung services. And by the way, here is the super user application. Like I said earlier, this ROM comes pre-rooted. And you also get uh, the custom kernel. So let me quickly head into settings now. And let's head into more. Then about device. And let's take a look at what we have here. So as you can see, we are definitely using the Vikinger kernel. You do not get anything Knox related with this ROM, by the way, and it cannot replace your bootloader, so you're free of Knox apps. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the home screen and everything else here. This ROM was not meant to have extra features, such as uh, a different user interface and so on. And so one of the things which I mentioned in the beginning of this video was the CSC select. So here is the application. So it is highly advisable that you check this box, try with root mode, and then choose change TSC. So to ask for super user access and so on, allow it. Allow it if it asks you once more. And by the way, as you can see the warning here, this will perform a factory reset. So my TSC is this one, BGL, which is for Bulgaria. 
so I can select this and I can install this CST but beware that this will do a factory reset so it is recommended to do this in the beginning before you install any applications and restore your data so obviously I'm not gonna do this at the moment so I'm just gonna cancel but you know what you need to do you just need to select install your phone will basically reboot boot into recovery mode temporary do it do its job and so on and yeah that is how you change your tst so another thing which we're going to check now is to see if the rom is truly deorixed so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open up a root browsing tool such as root explorer and then head into the system directory and see if we have any orix files so i'm gonna open system then then app and as you can see, you only have APK files, so now you're free to modify any APK you want, any pre-installed system application, any uh, component application which comes with the Samsung TouchWiz ROM, such as the system UI, uh, framework REST APK and other APK files. And lastly, as I promised, I'm going to show you how you can install the init.d support, which is something that this kernel offers. And in order to be able to use it, you need to do some things first. So the first step is to install BusyBox. So open up the Google Play Store and look for BusyBox. So the installer which I, which I always use is this one. Notice the icon and the developer name. Choose that one and install it to your phone. The installer, as you can see, is barely 2.5 megabytes in size. And once the installer installs, you can then run it and give it root access, obviously, if it asks. So allow it. Close these pop-ups here. And finally, choose install. You do not need to wait for the scanning here. You can just choose install and you install BusyBox to your phone. And finally, as you can see, it says BusyBox is installed. So you can now even uninstall this installer application because you already have BusyBox installed. The next step is to install the init.d app. So you can find the APK in the link in the video description. I have already downloaded mine into my uh, phone storage. So here it is. Install this application. And once it is installed, open it. And basically, you, you get a button here to activate it. So just tap on activate. Once again, you get a root access uh, pop-up, so just allow it. If it asks one more time, just keep tapping on allow. You can also just make it to remember forever. Choose allow. And it should say done here as you can see. So the last step is to tap on the button verify to see if everything went well. And it says success, you have init.d support. So that's pretty much it guys. This was how to install this ROM, a quick look at it, how to set up init.d support. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And that is all everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed already, please do so as there will be more helpful videos like this in the future. Also, I would highly recommend to check out this other channel that I have. I do app reviews. I comment on things. I show you uh, various tips and tricks on stuff. So yeah, you can check it out if you like. Once again, thank you for watching everyone and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.